Good morning, Curve Connect 2021. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Lynn Switnowski and really happy to be here. I feel like I need to say hello in a couple of languages. So hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Um, it's such a fun thing to be here at this show because there's so many people from around the world here. So glad you're with us today. We're going to spend the next 45 minutes talking about improving profits at your retail operation, your bra fitting business. And I'm going to get right into it because I have so much to talk to you about. It's been quite a year. So let's, uh, let's talk about where we stand, right? And what's happened this year. I call it a year like no other. And if we think about your traditional business and you know what happened this year, um, I should say last year in the year of 2020, um, consumers traditionally came to your brick and mortar location and maybe you drove them with product that was on your shelves, in your stock room, in your bra closet. You had um, sales potentially, you had a flow of customers walking in your front door, right? And there were lots of things you could control. And then COVID hit and there were a lot of things you couldn't control. And I say that in the kindest way because it was in some cases sudden and one day you were open and the next you were closed. And what we learned about is how fragile the business model that we were using was. And the front door was closed and how did we communicate with people? And did our marketing really work in a non front door environment? Did it help drive people to the back door? And I'm not saying this to scare you, you all live through it, but the reality is many of you had to deal with things that were very confusing and you didn't have processes in place. And some of you did a great job and turned the flip flipped the switch really quickly. Others of you struggled, took a little bit longer, but now we're in the next year, it's 2021, and we thought we'd all be through this and we're not. So now the question is, what do you need to do? What systems did you implement? What are you waiting for to go back to the way that it was? Or are you looking at your business as a way to move forward and say, what did I adapt? What do I need to still change? And frankly, what do you do to become more profitable. And I am very, very connected to your industry. I have a lot of clients here and some of us had a record year. Um, it was amazing. I have a couple of e-commerce clients that had the best year they've ever had. I have other brick and mortar clients that are doing less business, uh, let's just say less hours that are open and are doing the same business. So what I wanna share with you today are some tips and tools and how to turn your business, what I use the word more digital, um, based. I still want you to bring a brick and mortar business, but I want you to meet your customers where they are and recognize that you can be more personal, even if the front doors aren't open, more sufficient, you can be faster to market and your customers, and you can have more influence with your customers. And that's really what I want to talk about today. What I want to say is of all the common thread that you learned last year is that your customer's voice speaks volumes. When they can't come into your store, how do you respond to them? How do you communicate with them? What did you do and what can you do? And we're gonna talk about three areas today that I believe really will help your business make profitable changes and can deliver profitable results in 2021 and beyond in three areas. The first one in the middle is engaging your customers. And I know you will all be excited to learn more marketing tips, which is great. And I'm always happy to share them. The other two was I use the word not quite so sexy and improving your processes and using technology to enhance your day-to-day -day business operation. But let me be clear, those are absolutely critical. Improving those are absolutely critical to delivering more profit. So let's get right into it and talk about um, you know, marketing. And when I say that, obviously it's a direct channel to communicate with your customers. And Many of you did this exceptionally well. You used Facebook videos, you use Instagram posts, you use Instagram Live. Um, for those of you that didn't, we need to step up. The next piece, and some of you are doing this really well, and I want you to continue along this, is to use your social media as a selling tool. Um, I have got a lot of my clients now in, um, 
in the process of either implementing or hiring or having somebody just come on board and what I'm calling a digital salesperson, somebody that can help as a salesperson directly lead your customers via your social media to a purchase. Um, let's talk about what that is. That's called social commerce. And what it is, is your customers, maybe not at your bra fitting business or lingerie store today, are used to shopping online. They buy directly from social media all the time. The question is, do they do that from your business? It creates deeper relationships. You're constantly connected 24 seven, right? They're following social media feeds every day, whether that's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or WhatsApp. Your customers are there every day and they're building a deep relationship with brands like yours. And I really want them to have a deep connection with your business so that they shop there. Let's talk about what that means. One of my clients is in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts. They're called 40 Winks. And here's what I mean when I say Instagram shopping directly. This is their feed on Instagram. This is a post that they put up. And if you notice in the top right corner, it says one of five. I'm going to show you a few more of the posts. But this is a, this is a post that they put up and sure enough, it's their front window, which customers who shop at their store know their front window and what it looks like, right? It's almost like they're walking in the front door. They've got a mannequin and in it, they are using Instagram shopping tools to connect while their customers are browsing on Instagram. Think of it as what I call an engaging storefront, right? You can post this and we talk about it in a second. You can do this via a post. You can do this via an Instagram story. Um, but here's the key. Your customers do all the work. When they see this image, a white dot shows that something is what I quote tagged. And then they see this. Here's a quick description of it. Here's how much it is, right? And then it leads to a direct shopping opportunity. And boom, here's what happens. From the front window, customer in the same sequence comes into the store, seems more pretty product, if you will, on their shelves, right? These are face outs in the store. And then when they click, it links to a face Instagram, I apologize, shop, right? So here's the, the second one in the middle is the connection to the Instagram shop. And then when you click, it says more, boom direct shopping opportunities. Let me walk you through that again. Front window, enticing customers in an Instagram post, which is tagged. Then it leads to more, second photo, more shop. And then third photo, click on it and boom, you're in my shop. And as I call it, set up an Instagram shop and swipe up for sales. So this is one way to engage your customer. I know you've all been on Instagram. You're using social media more effectively this year. That's great. I want you to keep doing that. Now I want you to make your post shoppable and saleable. And again, whether that's an Instagram post, whether that's a Facebook post, you can set up an Instagram shop. You can set up a Facebook shop. Coming in 2020, late 2021, I should say, um, Instagram will keep followers on Instagram. So this shop setup, you can purchase directly from the shop. You can't do it right now, but eventually you'll be able to shop directly from Instagram. So you can keep people there. That's a really big feature. Another tool to upgrade. Again, let me remind you, we're talking about taking your profits to the next level. So you need to utilize social commerce in 2021. If you haven't already, in 2021, you need to create a process to collect reviews from what I'm calling every transaction, wherever it happens. I know that you all are great about asking for a review. Maybe if a customer comes in, maybe, you know, I'm making too many assumptions and that you have a process, but you need one. Your customers are shopping via reviews. It's on, their, it's on your Google site. It's on your social media pages. They're looking for information on customers, especially if they can't get into your store, right? We're, as I said, I'm up in Canada, just north of Toronto right now, and we're in a lockdown. 
and have been since December 26th. Only grocery stores, no retail stores open. There is a bra fitting store in the town I'm in. They've had to utilize their front windows. They've had to utilize their social media pages so that they could create a connection with customers. And they have been able to sell for Valentine's Day via their social media. And they've been able to do this because there's a lot of credibility with their current customers, but they've also been doing a really great job of posting reviews and showing, hey, this is how this store shops. I, and then the latest one last week was, I love this store. We've been closed for a month and they've still been making it easy for me to shop with them. I just got four new bras from them, you know, and the review was glowing. So think of the review as a connection point, whether that's if eventually if you're open, it's a physical transaction in the store, or if it's online. What's the process in your store? Does every single sales associate know if they shop online, here's the path. It's an automatic text or email. We hope you liked your purchase. Here's a link, please fill out a review. If it's a physical interaction, if you have an iPad set up to get reviews, right? Where do we get reviews? How do we talk about that on a daily basis? That needs to be part of your marketing in 2021. The third thing is, I know you're all going to tell me, and I trust, trust me when I say to you, I miss seeing your pretty faces in person. We're here. I'm leaving my picture up on the screen so that we can just talk about this and you can see me and my interaction. It takes time, I know, to do the marketing I'm asked you to do. So I'm giving you tools. Think about how do you use apps? How do you use tools to improve your efficiency? communication tools, scheduling tools, um, messaging programs, video programs, review. They have what's called a review aggregator. Use this slide and Google any one of these terms. I don't have an affinity for any. I use Hootsuite. That's a great scheduling tool. I use, um, I measure my Google Analytics for sure. My video um, tools, I'm an iPhone person. So sometimes I use my you know, iMovie apps to create videos, review aggregators. It's what you like. Are you a desktop person? Are you a mobile person, right? I have my, I have my phone with me all day today, you know, and you can use any of the tools on your um, phone and do this on mobile. The average mobile user has 80 apps. They use 40 a month. As a business owner, how many apps do you have on your phone to make it easier to run your business, to connect with your customers wherever you are, whenever you want to? And if you're working from home because you're a teacher these days, how easy it is, how easy is it, I should say, for you to flip the switch and to manage your business and to post content? And, and frankly, are you even watching this you know, um, session? Curve Connect via um, your mobile device, via an iPad, or are you sitting at a desk making time for this? Some of you I know are watching this two weeks after this session and you didn't even get there live. Those of you who are live today know that that's you know, a great tool. You can see it live, but some of you might have been too busy and are watching it afterwards. So make it easier to manage your business and marketing using apps in 2021. Critical, critical marketing. Use your window as a display, not a mannequin, right? So the one on the left is another one of my clients and she posts this on her social media pages. The one in the middle is a great one. Make your windows saleable, right? Again, photo op. Third one, make sure that you, if you have a window display, this is a great, you can buy this Instagram frame, put your store on it, show your Instagram handle, and then change your mannequins, take pictures of the new mannequins, and then post it on your social media. You've now made your front door windows, or windows, again, your store might be closed, but you can change and display new products on a regular basis and make customers interactive, make your displays interactive, right? and remind people at the same time, you've got a great active Instagram page. 
to do that, you need good visuals. And a new cost of marketing in 2021 and beyond may be having somebody do your marketing for you to create great visuals. I've got some really great people. I have um, access in my network to really good people who could manage your social media, create content on a daily basis. I'm happy to share those names with you. Um, you wanna do it yourself? Use these great tools, right? Image design tools, video tools I was talking about before, planning tools, calendar tools. So use these tools to enhance your business. So that was marketing. I know you all engaged, you're all taking furious notes. Please promise me that you will take as furious notes in this next section, because this is where the money is. And this is where what I call in business terms, we use the word leakage. Not managing your business day to day, the finance piece of it, the budgeting piece of it, um, creates the most missed profit opportunities. Do you have, maybe you have a bookkeeper who gives you a P&L at the end of the month. One of my clients called me giddy the other day because her January P&L came in and I don't manage her business operations, I manage her inventory. And she said, I made more money in January than I did in January of 2020 on less sales. And she was surprised about that. And I said, I'm not. Here's why. We managed your inventory more effectively. We bought closer to need. You manage your payroll more effectively because you've got people in certain times. Your store is open less hours. So you're managing your business day to day more effectively. Hence, there's more profit there. And she said, oh. I'm saying to her, and I said to her afterwards, now let's plan for that to happen every single month of 2021. Are you doing the same thing? Create an annual sales and profit plan. Measure the results. Don't let your results happen. Manage the results you want to happen. And that starts by putting a plan in place and managing to the plan. I have this template if you need it. Contact me, my contact information is all throughout this. Please, I'm happy to send it to you, show you how to use it. Keep good financial records. That's another way of saying it. Manage your cash daily. Like, do you know what your cash flow is? Do you know how many purchases you've made for the month? Do you have a spreadsheet that lists what's coming in in the month of February, what's coming in in the month of March? How do you plan for that? Do you know? If not, that's the place you need to start. Keeping good records is good business, right? Cash flow matters for your business. Hopefully, you know, in, in March of 2021, we're going to be up against a year of COVID. If your doors are open again, I hope, and I'm planning for my clients to have as well, I hope you're planning to have a great April and May. But what does that look like? Are you buying just enough? Are you buying too much? And now you're going to be in a cash flow crunch again. Please look, manage your cash daily, anticipate what's coming. That right there will help you drive more profits. As I said, marketing helps you meet more customers. That's top line sales, that's sell through of your product. The day-to-day -day business processes that you put in place to manage your business will be what helps drive profit, will help drive long-term value. If you're on the cusp of, do I wanna own this business forever? Great, this is you know your job every day. Do you wanna drive more salary for yourself, for your sales team? Do you want to make more profits? Do you want to plan to sell your business? This part of the presentation, getting processes in place, creating good records, creating a plan will help you do that. I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about this for all of you because I want your bank accounts to be full of money and for you to be liquid and for you to feel good about what you've grown, what you've built. I want you all to be proud of that. Another process, we talked about inventory, it is your biggest expense. So how are you managing it? I like to have, I like to think of inventory in three buckets. And I'm asking all of you, you're at a trade show right now, right? You're at the Curve Connect, you're at a digital trade show, you're meeting with um, vendors, that's great. I'm happy for you. I love that you get to do that. Um, there are three phases of your current inventory, right? One is, I say your current inventory, meaning what you have on hand and what you're looking to buy. The first phase is what I call the pre-buying. What happened last year? We know what happened last 
fall, some of you, right, you're buying products for summer and fall right now. Do you know what happened? For every single one of my clients, we already know what happened, how much sales they did in every department that they planned, what their turn was, what their on-hand inventory levels were, and we have a plan because we've assessed what happened. Have you done the same? Are you looking at buying the same levels of inventory last year just because that's a good start? Well, my hope is that you do more sales this fall as customers, as doors reopen, as people come back in. How are you planning for that? What kind of liquidity are you leaving yourself to what I call chase bestsellers? Um, so managing your future means analyzing your past. Right now, it's you know mid-February 2021. You've got three buckets of current inventory or three buckets of inventory on your floor. Current inventory, old inventory, and what's to come. Those are the three areas that you have to look at. So when I say manage you know, what happened last year so you can buy, then you have to manage the selling and sell through of what you have on the floor. What's your ratio today of bras to if you carry sleepwear or loungewear? Um, you know, what's your ratio of core or essential product to fashion bra selling in today's day and age? Do you know these things? Um, do you know how much physical inventory you have on the floor right now? And what's working and what's not? That is going to be the way that you drive more profit for your business by understanding that. And then that third bucket, what do you have on your floor that's not selling? That's old inventory. Frankly, it's not that old, but it's not selling. Do I need to do more marketing and merchandising to try and get customers aware of that? Or frankly, is it really, really old and I need to get rid of it? We don't want to have more than 10 to 20 percent old inventory at any given time. And when I say old, that's fashion inventory, right? Basics or core product, as long as they're ongoing and you're replenishing them on a regular basis, that's not dead stock liquidating what I call dead stock and merchandise, that should only be no more than 20% of your on hand at any given time, right? Speaking of core products, how do you manage? What are your core products? What are those essentials that you replenish? What are, as I like to call it, what are your never outs or your top 50 items? When do you know how much you need to have on hand by size? Do you have a model for those? Do you know how much sales they drive? Do your core inventory drive 50% of your sales, 40 to 50% product that never gets marked down, so that turns on a regular basis? These are things you know that I hope you know. If not, let's figure it out. I can absolutely show you how to do that. You know, do you know how much inventory you have on hand totally by store? You know, and how much that relates to what your current sales plans are for the next 90 days? because that's about how much inventory you should have. Sales, if you turn four times a year, which would be great, you should have no more than the next 90 days on hand of your inventory. Uh, so create inventory plans on your core products, build them from the bottom up. And you may tell me that you're a very fashion forward store and that your core products are a smaller percent of your total, that's fine. Your customers want you to flow newness on a regular basis. That's okay. But how much do you have coming in? How is it working? Is it is it achieving a 70 or 80% sell through on your fashion collections so that you move through them and move on to the next one? You need to know that too. Core management is really gonna be critical. For those of you that carry lounge and sleepwear, I'm assuming you you sell more and you have sold more lounge type looks in the last, you know, eight, if you're like my customers, eight to nine months. So the question is, how are you planning it going forward? You're going to keep bringing in lounge looks? What's the ratio of lounge to sleep in your current assortment? What's selling? And do you have inventory flowing in the future to match that? Right? It's constantly matching sales versus inventory, and it's a constant assessment. That right there will generate excess profit, I shouldn't say excess, more profit for your business. You are at a trade show, you're going to have meetings with people, right? Today is the first day of the virtual show, so you set up meetings. 
I'm suggesting your vendors and the partnerships that you have, I know they're critical. I know how great they are to support you. I see it with my clients. So when you have meetings with people, talk about how you can grow the business together. You know, do you have new products? Do you have key products, core distribution? Are you the only one in your area, trading area? Do you get a limited time that you're the first person to have them? Do you know? You know, have you ever asked for that to be exclusive? Um, marketing support. I call it retail service programs, right? Do you have your vendors help you with associate training? That's really key today. Event support. Again, even if it's virtual. Social media advertising. $25 goes a much longer way on social media advertising than it did in creating a typical newspaper ad back in the day. Um, are you on everybody's store locator? Do you ask your um, do you hyperlink your vendor posts to your pages to get access to a broader audience? Um, these are things that they can help you do. Um, the other thing in the process piece, can they help you with what I call flexible inventory management? You may be a, a product swap. Something that's working really, really well for somebody else may not be working for you. And they might want that product. Swap it out and get in something else. If something's really Bad, can you exchange it, make a return, um, and use it for a future purchase? So a lot of these things are partnership levels. It's about asking. It's about coming up with creative solutions that work for both of you. Um, and you're at a trade show. You can start that conversation now. Certainly, if you're watching this afterward, doesn't mean you can't pick up the phone and have these conversations. Creating a win-win partnership, growing a brand in your store is, is good for everybody. Another process that I want you to think about is your associates. And I think some of you experienced this with COVID and maybe you had to furlough people and you were upset about that. Maybe people were furloughed and didn't want to come back. That happened to some of my clients because they were still getting um, unemployment. So here we have these loyal people who my owners wanted to support, wanted to bring them back as soon as they could. And then they found out that their employees didn't want to come back to work. That was a really, really hard thing that we had to maneuver through. Um, you know, where does loyalty stand? I don't know about your associates. I don't know where they are. What I do know is you need to teach your associates how to manage what I'm calling modern customers. So do you have really great associates that don't use the computer and they've been bra fitting for 20 years and you love them? That's great. Can you teach them new skill sets about how to engage, what's on social media, how to text their customers? You tell me. What I, own, what I know is that you are only as good as your, if I call it, and I don't mean your employees literally are the weakest link, but if you have a staff that isn't able to deal with a digital modern customer, it's going to create problems for you. It's going to create follow-up problems because that's where your future customers are going to be. You need to hire associates that expand your store capabilities. Maybe that push you as the owner of the business in a way um, that is a tad uncomfortable, but um, it's only because you don't know it. So think about people. Do you hire associates that have more technology capable capabilities than you so that raises the level of everybody? It will help your store get better. As I mentioned earlier, many of my stores, I'm working with them. We have a job description. I'm happy to send it to you. We have a digital salesperson. Their job is to help put and implement social media content and then to follow up on the leads that those sales, that those posts generate that lead to sales. So it's a win-win. You know, your store is generating sales from what I call store two, which is the internet, not from a internet brick and mortar shop, but from social media. What do you need for a future staff for your store? What do you need to teach your associates about the current um, climate and meeting customers where they are? So marketing, we talked about implementing new processes within your marketing, using technology to enhance the marketing by using apps that make it easier. Business processes, right? Everything from cash flow plant planning to um, inventory, which is critical, to what do you need to do in terms of hiring processes for your store. Now I just want to end with the technology and how do you connect 
every piece of that together. How can you use technology to enhance your success? Obviously adds more profit. Some of it does require money to implement. So the first thing is understand how your business works and where the bottlenecks are, right? Is your POS an inhibitor or an enhancer to your business in today's day and age, right? When the door shut, were you stymied or were you absolutely perfectly fine? Your inventory was able to be read, it married your physical inventory, it was able to match with your POS system. So when your customers may have bought online, if you have a digital space, if you have an e-commerce shop, they knew what you had on hand, right? Payments, your doors closed, how did you take payments? Was it really, really simple because you could take virtual payments because you took Venmo or Apple Pay and they used a QR code or did you have a traditional cash register that because the door wasn't open, it was really hard? Um, payroll, HR software consulting, where were you with all that? You know, instead of writing a physical payroll, were you able to, you know, send uh, payroll directly to your associates because you have a system in place. Your credit card, you know, that's something. What's your credit card transaction look like? Um, do you have a square reader? It makes it really, really simple. You tie in all of your CRM data, your customer data to your POS system, and that is, allows you to store, you know, customer um, information, your credit cards. Um, that was, you know, did your customer acquisition cost or your transaction cost, I should say, go up because of what happened during COVID. You know, you've been meaning to get to it, you just haven't. Understand where your business is today. And then if I could urge you to think about two years from now, what's your business going to look like? Um, you know, I don't want to scare you into this to say scared straight, if you will, if you all remember that movie, but I'm not sure that your customers are ever going to come in to the level that they did before. Some of you did an amazing job. I saw stories. I, I watched your, you know, I watched the Curve webinars series with retailer interaction, and I saw so many great stories about all of you who met your customers where they were, and you shipped them, you know, products, and they had you had curbside delivery, and they loved it. I think they're going to continue to love it when you off when the doors are fully open. So you may not be nearly as busy physically in the store. They may come back once every two to three times as opposed to every single time because it's just more convenient. They're busy moms. They can't get in as much. Maybe they moved away and they still have a great relationship with you because you've made that relationship possible via your social connection with them, via your virtual fittings with them. So think about the store of 2022 fully open, knock on wood. I got a wood desk here. COVID is behind us. Um, but what does your store look like? How do you digitally interact with customers? Therefore, what kind of systems do you need to have in place? Here's some just some great. Snapshot this page. Accounting, project management, phone, payroll, time management, besides the marketing ones I gave you before, right? Let me remind you what they were software that helps you with content creation, scheduling, analytics, videos, right? What your posts look like. How can technology enhance your business going forward? Not just save you time, but down the road, save you money. And then the question is, where do you need to start? And I know it's overwhelming. Pick a place. Do you want to focus on availability of your inventory? You know, marketing, I want you to always meet more customers, but maybe, you know, that's not the place you want to start. Maybe you know you have too much inventory and you know you've had it for a while. Can you improve that? Start there. Uh, maybe it's just time and you need to use some of these apps to give yourself more time to create. Um, just be kind to yourself. You don't have to do it all at once, but just start somewhere. And if we can help, again, we were physically in you know, New York last year, talking to you about where to go. We met a lot of new clients. We're happy to share that with you. Um, but I also just want to talk about where you can connect. If we can help you and we can, you know, make it easier for you to, to drive your business, you know, going forward, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We want to do that. This presentation will be available to you 
can connect with the people at um, Curve. You can contact me and I will get you the copy of this presentation so that you have access to it so you can refer back to it. Our job is to help you be better in 2021 and beyond. I personally, you know, the name of this session, we thought it was really important, improving profits all year long. Simple solutions, yes, it takes time to implement, but I know you can do it. And now I'm gonna stay here and answer your questions um, and help you create more profits. So what can I do? How can I help? Let me hear your questions. Go. And thanks for being here.